All right, everybody, backs against the time wall. No more mistakes. We've got to get this report out for March 7th to March 13th. No more takes after this. So if I screw up, I screw up, and it's embarrassing. New moon in Pisces this week. We have an element of lucidity because of a really um, a big shift with Mercury. And then there's more shifts, you know, shifts on, on shifts. All right, here's our overview slide. Stumbling in lucidity because Mercury is going to leave finally, finally leave Pisces because he doesn't like it there. And very hard to think. It's weakened and all these uh, problems with not, nothing being logical and dreamy and cloudy. And so, boom, he stumbles into Aries and everything changes. Men, men, all the mentalities change. And then in, in its wake, then Venus comes into Pisces and makes everything very um, and well exalted. Pisces, uh, Venus is exalted in Pisces. And so we have this extra strong Piscean influence this week, but with a strong mind once Mercury leaves. So at first, that's why we have this patience at the front side. We have a waning crescent moon. Um, it's kind of this waiting period, kind of a lull. Yeah, it's the lunar cycle, but it's also the the uh, Mercury still kind of wading through the waters of Pisces and trying to deal with the tricky illusions and imaginations of Neptune. And so it's just sort of this, can we, can we get on to something? Uh, and, and then, and then boom, Mercury leaves. Now in the dream bot, can't wait to show you this. This is really interesting stuff. Um, a lot of new words in the dream bot. Faux pas. Is that how you pronounce it? I don't even know, but Mercury and Neptune kind of making mistakes. And that's why we use the word stumbling into lucidity. We have lucidity because Mercury leaves. So we have full capacity of Mercury now that can think and think fast and is awake and aware. Um, but meanwhile, Pisces is very strong still. So we have the dream, but we're waking up into the dream. Basically, we have lucidity. We're we're piercing the veil, right? And a whole lot more. We'll talk about all this and let's just get to it. Um, and a big shout out to Truth Is Everything. Congratulations. You have won the best comment award and Heart goes out to you. Fascinating to observe the normies waking up just now at the 12th hour and complaining of tiredness while I'm literally physically damaged by exhaustion from 50 years of trying to communicate with you all. You're welcome. And kaboom, nine likes. Well done. Truth is everything. And being, well, truth is everything myself um, as, as an Aquarian. And I got probably a good 15 years of this work trying to communicate with normies and try to shake them out of their program dream. And it is hard work. So, but anyway, congratulations. Well deserved. Uh, where do I go next? Remember, I'm on this new computer thing, so things are hard. All right. Here's the dream bot. And. Let's zoom in. There we go. Oh, faux pas, faux pas. We have mistakes upon mistakes. And that is number two. Isn't that weird? Never seen that before in the dream bot. Even, well, not so weird if you know what's going on in today's world, but food is still number one word in the dream bot in the collective unconscious. People are obsessed about food. We got a lot of, we've got a lot of forces, um, going on to explain it, you know, um, first of all, prices going up, 
First of all, there's a big shakeup in our understanding of what good food is and, you know, new studies and um, everyone arguing their side. There's controversy about food and then there's poisoning of food and then there's, no, you need to eat insects and blah, blah, blah. You get the point. That's why food it's just stays up there or has been. Faux pas, um, lots of drama. What I wanted to show you is Jesus. That's an interesting, unusual word in our dream bot. Don't see that very often. And yet here it is halfway in, halfway down the run. And that matches our most recent um, energy shift report. This is commensurate with the lunar um, eclipse. Okay. And so DreamBot is sort of predictive in a way, and it's predicting that save your energy. And yet it's about two ish weeks out. So that's right in this basket of where the DreamBot is good at predicting. Also, oil. Does this mean there's going to be more of like an oil, uh, a bigger headline? Did you guys hear about Iran stealing a basically a U.S. owned boat, taking all the oil? I what like fifty million or five hundred million dollars worth of oil. Don't even I don't even remember. But that is probably why oil is in the Dreambot run. Um. There's punishment or boot. There's a boot for faux pas. And then time is also a big factor in the dream bot. All right. Here's our big picture. We're getting close to our eclipse cycle. So a surf and a half week away. And we're getting into a lunar eclipse in Libra. But right now... Um, we are over a new moon in Pisces on March 10th. So here's our graph. It's the stumbling into lucidity because it's this, this lull, this waiting. We're still in that um, intuitive philosopher archetype in the first part and the waning crescent moon. It's like kind of the end of a stage of the, that window. And we're entering into pierce the veil window, the energy window. And that happens this week. There's two things, two main things that happen. We have Mercury leaving Pisces and we have a Pisces new moon. And then we can throw in Venus in there as well. But there's your two kind of, when you put those together, we have waking up to the dream. Here's your overview to March. Mm, big news is the Mars and Uranus go exact in their square. This week, Venus is going to go into Pisces. This week, Mercury is going to go into Aries. And we got that new moon. We have a conjunction with Mercury and Neptune goes exact. And so technically, when Mercury does drop into uh, Aries, technically within an or above conjunction of Neptune, but for all intents and purposes, pretty much stumbling into and free of the Pisces, Piscean uh, influence. Thursday the 7th. All right, there's a lot to talk about here. First of all, let's, let's focus in on the squares. Tension, pressure still there, and it's the remnants of the sparks from Venus and the, you know, passion, Venus and Mars. The moon is going to make its way through there, kind of igniting that, uh, that, that last little residual sparks of Aquarius. And that's squared over to Uranus and Jupiter. But even bigger picture than that. Can you see how we're kind of, I'm calling it the cosmic squeeze. We're squeezing all of the planets into less than 120 degrees by the, um, by the time our ne next energy shift report, all the planets except for Pluto will be within 68 degrees. And that's for our eclipse energy, the, uh, the big eclipse, solar eclipse on April 8th. 
So things really just squeeze in together tightly. What we have is Chiron and North Node. Chiron over the North Node. Chiron will get a uh, central role uh, going forward and into this eclipse, into the eclipse cycle, because the eclipse happens right over Chiron. Pretty interesting. And we have, with Chiron and the North Node, we have an old wound revisited, like an injury given time to scar, yet not fully healed. You know, we could be looking at a, an emotional scar, like a, like a scarred heart or more of a physical one. Um, but this is the time you're going to be reviewing past hurts. This time, instead of reacting to these, well, maybe potentially traumas, we're going to see the opportunity to understand the origins and seek closure of said hurts and pains. So what are you going to feel with this alignment, Chiron over the North Node? Old vulnerabilities or traumas or might be triggered. Forgiving oneself or others becomes much more possible. Committing to personal growth through facing fears. All right. And then we have... Mercury and Neptune getting closer. We're in about a two degree orb now. So we already had have we already have Mercury in detriment and weakened in Pisces and going into like a like a double or triple uh weakening here because we have combust with the sun and uh, Mercury is parallel with Neptune. So we have a combust and we've got con conjunction with Neptune that's intensified. It's a lot and it's been a while. And so it wears on the mind, mind cloudy, almost maybe have given up ish or the you know, thoughts of giving up or, or, you know, particularly those who have a high amount or significant mercury presence in your natal chart. It's just hard for mental processes and cognitions to happen. Friday the 8th, we're going to talk about the perfected at 9.05 a.m., 9.06 a.m., Mercury and Neptune conjunction. It's going to be more like a weaving, you know, weaving of etheric web, spinning threads of thought and word yet lacking structures and stability. Ideas knit together in an intangible tapestry. Interpretation requires entering imagination's magic. So it's a soup. It's not facts. We want facts. There's Mercury is lusting and thirsting for facts, but it's, you gotta, you gotta experience this magic. You gotta experience the imagination to get any sort of um, thoughtful or, or, or even helpful kind of uh, thoughts here where perceptions shape fluidly as petals on an ocean surface. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly what Mercury doesn't want. Doesn't, not a, does not appreciator of art. It wants the facts. But, but if you're going to do this right, you got to experience the, uh, the fantasy and the imagination of Neptune expressing oneself feels elusive yet creative creativity surges and, you know, getting some creative insights as well, especially for our surf reports. And, um, I got a lot to say about that, but I might be doing another video, an extra video this week, just to describe what I'm thinking about changing in these reports. And what, by the way, it reminds me, um, I need your comments, put those comments below, please. If, especially if you really want these, these typical, these weekly reports unchanged, because I'm thinking about changing them and they're going to go in more commensurate with the energy shift windows. This is very important. I forgot to mention that earlier. I need your feedback on, um, is it okay 
that I go more to instead of every single week to an energy window type of reporting to where, you know, some windows are two days long, some days are 12 days long, et cetera, because we put an archetype to that window. And so uh, it, it means that eventually every day will be covered, but it's going to be presented in terms of the windows instead of just each week. And it may not give you enough information, but what do you like about these surf reports that need to go unchanged? That's the question, okay? All right, let's move on. Saturday the 9th, Mercury in Aries. Mind is out of the storm and into the fire. And so it's going to be a bit of a shock and eyes are going to be wide open and you're like stumbling in. But, but the point is clear thoughts. So when you have clear thoughts with high amount of arousal or a high amount of awareness and focus like Mercury and Aries, but you still have a very strong uh, Piscean energy, then we are waking up to the dream. And, um, so, uh, incidentally, so this energy just of Mercury going into Aries is overcoming obstacles through action where Mercury's quick wit meets Aries spirit of initiative ideas spark and spread through debate may erupt. Let differences spur progress, not division. With bold yet considerate discourse that conquers challenges through cooperative effort. Here's the picture. As um, people getting their say, people wanting their say, right? Thinking on one's feet yet debating passionately. Tackling ta tasks with zest. Learning occurs through taking initiative and taking risks. And then on Sunday, we have the new moon in Pisces. And by the way, the energy has shifted. It's energy shift number four now. Um, and to review, to go more into detail about the energies here on this new moon, I want you, and I'll put the card right, right here, um, is to go back and watch the energy shift number four, ES4, piercing the veil. That's good between March 10th and March 19th. And the only thing that I, I don't remember if I talked about it, but we need to be looking at our lunar goals. And lunar goals in Pisces means that we could be cultivating intuition would be a good example embracing empathy and compassion, maybe working on that, maybe reducing anger outbursts and, and providing more compassion or to be integrated. If you're an Aquarian who sort of just observes everywhere and that would be a good one to engage in, like actively engage in empathy and compassion instead of just sitting back and watching. Um, tap into your creative side is another option. Embrace your sensitivity. Practice self-care and boundaries, especially since Pisces tend to have very have boundary problems that that really come back and hurt them. And so putting more boundaries in place could be one. You know, sectioning off and make sure you're taking care of yourself on a daily basis or staying in balance. And foster connection with nature. Being grounded is a great way to prevent just uh, getting way out into irrational land and maybe too much spirituality. needs Again, needs to be balanced. I'm not saying one's better than the other. We need both. Pisces can tend to get off too far into spirituality to where they don't have any roots in the real world. But nonetheless, we have an opportunity here to pierce the veil. And, that ha and that's good for, according to the energy shift video, from the 10th through the 19th. 
<clears throat> and to make this even stronger, Monday the 11th, Venus goes into Pisces and she's exalted there. And so we have, you know, a very, a very spiritual, a very esoteric version of a very strong form of Venus. So Venus slips into Neptune's realms, affecting um, affection nurtures on qualities beyond sight. So it's not just the way we look. We're not superficial. We're, there's a spiritual depth now to Venus. Bonds form through empathy, artistry, sitting depth, words cannot reach. Harmony arises when actions reflect compassion, not dreams alone. So what do we feel when Venus goes into Pisces? Connection, values, character over just image. Creativity bonds lovers more than lavish gestures. Forgiveness and sacrifice builds understanding. Sacred or charitable activities being bring people together. And a whole lot more. Tuesday the 12th. Just an update on the moon now. We have the waning crescent moon that is starting our new cycle in fiery Aries. So this would be a good time in this period to really get your Pisces goals started. Because once it gets into uh, Taurus, it can be a little slow to get started. So you might as well use this impulsiveness of Aries. The emotions will be sort of impulsive. And so you can use that to go ahead and get a little early start on your Piscean lunar goals. And the good thing then about once moon goes into Taurus is it has that and that tendency to sustain it has the momentum. Once you get started, Taurus, it's very hard to stop them. So this would be good for your lunar goals. Get started early when the moon's in Aries before moon enters into Taurus. And then on Wednesday, look at all the squares. There aren't much. And this is going to be a few, a uh, couple of weeks. It's all in that energy report this is waking up to the dream, and this is it. So we've got a large um, Piscean energy with an exalted Venus. We have the sun now has entered into a conjunction with Neptune, so very um, Piscean uh, added to the just Pisces, so it's like double Pisces. And then Mercury out and in Aries. So waking up to the dream. This is the front side of our week. Patience. Hexagram five. A fisherman can cast the line, but still can only wait for the fish to bite. And when the when we have a waning crescent moon just before the new moon, that's the front side of our surf week. It's gonna be patience. It's going to be a lull. It might be boring for some of you. For others, it won't be boring because Mercury will be swept up trying to stay alive or try to figure things out, wasting a bunch of energy trying to do that. Or you can be the intuitive philosopher, just like ES3 instructs. Being the intuitive philosopher is where we want to be instead of noticing how impatient you might be. If you're impatient in the front side of the surf week, recommend that you enter into the intuitive philosopher role. Okay, let's go to the final slide. And why won't it zoom in? It zooms in there. Okay. Well, hmm. You know what? Got to open it up separately. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. But now I can zoom in. I think that's the dumbest thing about Windows 
ridiculous. I got a lot of complaints. All right, March 7th through the 13th. While the waning crescent moon is creating a slow and introspective period, Mercury over Neptune will make dreamy thoughts and magical imaginations, possibly tapping into infinity. And then suddenly it all shifts, starting with Mercury going into Aries. Thoughts turn strong and passionate just six hours prior to the new moon in Pisces. Mercury's upgrade helps the overall Piscean attuned seekers to pierce the veil with lucid dreams and spiritual awakenings. Tension and pressure begin to drop away towards the backside of this week. And we have I Ching 9 stumbling into lucidity. And now let's go to our solution. All right. So basically put the hex, uh, put the change line in, we get hexagram nine. That is small influences means cultivate humility, practice patience, focus on the details, show kindness and compassion, seek simplicity. Our new moon goes into the calculator and it converts into hexagram 22 of the rave. And we have sidereal Aquarius. So hexagram 22 of the rave says sensitivity, the modification of behavior to enrich interactions. The mediumistic simplicity that rejects elaborate rituals, the possibility of social openness through the rejection of formality. It means we want to get rid of traditions and any rules that are keeping us too superficial. We want to get rid of formalities enough to be able to open up social openness. I know that sounded redundant, but here is our solution. Remember, we have small influences. We have don't be so formal this week and in social openness. So Daryl Aquarius, and we have a new moon state. So the week is divided up into two sectors due to the new moon midway. Start off simplifying your existence. Focusing in on the mundane and trivial matters. That's a correlation to the moon state at the beginning of the week. Sit back, relax, hang out, chill out, and rejuvenate. Then on Sunday, March 10th, begin your Piscean lunar goals for the next couple of weeks, focusing on connection, spirituality, self-care, boundaries, or anything you determine is important for you. After the new moon, begin to plan how and when to fulfill your goals. All Surf Week, maintain the big picture with Sidereal Aquarius. Behave unconventionally. Detached. Be original. Unapologetic. Be humanitarian. Combining that with the rave means that we reduce formalities. Aquarius can be good with that. Increase social openness. And that's according to the rave. It's buck tradition. Just focus on being your true, uniquely authentic self. Avoiding traditions, rules, formalities, etc. All right, so the most confusing part of this week is just the energetic shear from one energetic window to the next. Right in the middle is the new moon in Pisces. And so if we follow the lunar cycle, it's waning crescent initially. So just relax, let go, hang out, don't do much. And then once that new moon occurs on Sunday, that's when you create the Piscean goals. And then when you go behave and when you go act, do that in accordance with Aquarian traits. Okay. Now, um, for those, now I did, I didn't have any time to do the runes, so I'm sorry I don't have those. Um, and those are going to change here pretty soon as well. 
but um, yeah, maybe I will create a new video to explain the ideas that I have for the the way forward in our astrology and inner energy um, discussions, including tropical and sidereal, including solution and influence, including energy shift. There's one thing that I think just based on the feedback we've gotten so far, the energy shift videos seem to be um, getting some good reviews. And I'm on a, a, it just means that I'm pleased with that because this is kind of a bigger picture idea. I haven't gotten to the full manifestation of where I want to go with that energy shift window concept to where, you know, like the old way of doing our, our reports are that each week gets a new report. Well, in the new way would be, um, I'm going to, I'm going to get, further and further into the future talking about each and every window and each energy window might be two days, might be seven days, might be 12 days, just depends on the actual energies. So if, if 12 days is all pretty much the same, then that will be the window. If, if it's only like one day, then that will be the window and we get rid of week to week to week. Um, but every day then will be covered. It's just we're going to be covering it by window instead of by calendar weeks. Calendar weeks are pretty good for the lunar cycle. So, you know, that's the advantage there. But for overall energies, and that's what I'm concerned about is, yeah, so you have a, a moon that's in a certain state you have the sun in a certain place. These are do the dominant factors, but then you have intensifications with the parallels and contra parallels and the squares and the sextiles and putting it all together. What is the archetype for that energy, for that group of energies? And then whatever archetype that is, how long of a period is that good for? That's the archetype for the window. And then, um, so then it's just a matter of as we get closer and closer to that window on the calendar, then I just need to include a small solution video in order to help us prepare for that and get kind of our mindsets about how we're going to behave in that window. But I don't want to give that a, I can give the influence out, you know, maybe, you know, months in advance. And as we get closer, then all I need to do is just update on the solution. So anyway, give me your thoughts. If you have any, give me your feedback. Do you like the energy shift reports better than the traditional surf reports? If you're a big surf report fan, what parts of that do you not want to um, change? If you're not a surf report fan, what are the parts that need to change the, the biggest? Okay. All right. So I'll take all your feedback and I thank you all for supporting the channel. You all have a great week.